So welcome back everyone. Let's make a start if we can. I hope you enjoyed the break um, and had a chance to get some good discussions in. I'm looking forward to this next session. It's always good to get uh, feedback and an insight into what's happening on the ground in different uh, different territories, different markets. So we've, we're very pleased to have uh, a few key players join us to take us through their experiences um, and, and how they see the DF business developing in, in, the, in the markets that they operate. So let's um, kick off uh, and get, uh, get, get the, the wheels in motion with looking at uh, a presentation on the DEF, uh, the DEF market in, on the East Coast. Um, and to do that, we're very glad to have Matt Goodolf join us. Uh, Matt is President and Chief Managing Officer at Superior Lubricants Company, uh, a role that he's had since 2014. Um, and that's based in North Tonawanda, uh, New York. Uh, Matt is responsible for improving operations and leading growth of sales and distribution of existing business models, as well as developing the new business um, in environmental service of Superior Lubricants. Uh, so one of those uh, products in his portfolio is DEF. Uh, Superior Lubricants is a, a key player in the region, of course, um, and their approach to DEF I think is really interesting in terms of, of uh, a proactive uh, business model and uh, tackling things early. So we're looking forward to hearing what Matt has to share with us. Uh, he's going to be giving us a, a background to his approach and where he sees the future challenges. So uh, thanks for joining us, Matt, and uh, the, the stage is yours. Thank you, Tim. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, the, the next couple slides, I uh, just want to give you an overview um, of who Superior Lubricants is, not as much as a commercial, but just to give you an idea of what I've seen with uh, people that deliver or you know, distribute DEF, at least in, in our market, they're pretty much the same. You got distributors that uh, kind of do the same thing as us, giving you an idea of, of what a, a typical uh, business that's delivering bulk DEF looks like. Um, so we have um, basically four key bulk um, product categories. And you know some of them are more commoditized than others, but uh, you know the, our biggest category that we deliver is lubricants. You got antifreeze, you got washer fluid. Uh, washer fluid is, is very volatile, obviously, with methanol, which is um, you know, how we manufacture our washer fluid. And then diesel exhaust fluid. Um, these are all bulk products. As you can see, the, the other interesting piece, and I've seen this in, in our market a lot, is you have your major brands with the key you know, washer fluid, antifreeze, and lubricants. Um, and on the DEF, it's not as much about that. It's more about the spec and high quality product. That's really what seems to matter, at least in our market, more than anything. We also have another division, um, a company called Ecomax, which is in environmental services. And that way we can offer a, a total closed loop to all of our customers. Um, we, we target you know, four key customer segments. So we're in automotive, you know, commercial, heavy duty, industrial, and, and government accounts um, every single day delivering bulk products. We also have just a, another idea uh, from other distributors that we compete against. Um, you know, we have an auto parts division where we have a whole fleet of vans and, and auto parts um, doing hot shot deliveries. And then we have mock. Some of you may be um, familiar with that on the performance chemicals, auto magic, and then you know, a line of um, aqueous parts cleaners called CUDA. Um, as Tim said, we're headquartered basically out of Buffalo. Nice, warm um, place to come visit if you want to. I would. I would recommend only maybe May to August. Um, <laughs> that's where it's warm. Um, but we, we have vehicles in 26 states. I was talking a little bit um, to Tim about how we've, we've done this and, um, and able to put trucks in the field at a, at a pretty reasonable rate. Um, but when it comes to DEF, we, you know, we have four key areas where we blend and store um, DEF. And that is we have um, tanks, trucks, and a facility in Kitchener, Ontario. Um, we have a blending facility in Niagara Falls and one in Syracuse. And then we also um, store um, quite a bit of, of product in North Tonawanda. The biggest challenges that we have, um, I'm sure it's, you know, this is stuff we've been talking about um, the last couple of days, 
but I, I really just condense it down to storage supply and winter. Um, the storage is a piece that's tricky because unless you buy more vehicles, which aren't cheap, um, and hire more employees, you've got to have more storage. And that's tricky um, with DEF, a little different than a lot of the products that we carry. For example, lubricants, antifreeze, and washer fluid, um, those are products we can put, we have outside tank farms, and we can store you know, hundreds of thousands of gallons of that product. With DEF, it's tricky. It's got to be indoor, of course. Um, so in, you know, the other challenge we have in, in the Northeast, which is a really tricky part, um, it played a little havoc with us in 15, and that's why we expanded um, quite a bit in 16, is, is supply. We really only have a few supply sources unless we um, are willing to bring rail cars from other places, which we've, we've done. Um, we can bring them from the Gulf. But uh, it gets, gets tricky, little, you know, the, especially as uh, pricing is a tough challenge. Um, you know, that's, that's not easy. Winter is the, the biggest challenge for us and for our customers. Um, you know, we need in it, we have a, a definite need for insulated tank trailers. Um, it wasn't that big of a deal when we first started. We, what we first did was we went with high capacity, heavy haul permits in New York, which you can in New York. New York and Michigan have um, where you can actually haul a high volume of the product. The challenge is now we're, we're covering a much greater distance and we may have to drive you know, 300 miles to get to a, a delivery point. And when it's you know, minus 20, um, that might have some problems with the product. Um, so we're looking into that. That's a big challenge for us though. Um, and the, the DI water storage, if you, um, we, we have it set up, we wanna be able to, to blend, buy liquor and blend down, but you know, you've, like, same problems you run into with DEF. One of the things that is tricky though, we were talking a little bit about this yesterday, is keeping up with um, the customer's demand. So we have, you know, you, in the DEF with a growing market like this, it's, it's a great thing, great problem to have. Um, but it's tricky. You know, you got customers, their volume is increasing and you may have, you know, one bus garage that just, they changed out their entire fleet. So it wasn't a small 5% increase, it was a 50%, you know, 100% increase in volume. Um, that changes everything. They need tanks. They go from drums to tanks. We all know that story. Um, the other challenge, though, for us is we're trying to find other um, new categories. I know railroad is even a passenger railroad seems to be a, a nice category to go after. Um, so that also, you know, presents an, an item for us on looking for leads. Crazy that, you know, I'm saying that because we deliver lubricants and, and washer fluid to a lot of customers, but would really like to find um, a good source for targeting new customers and promoting, you know, bulk delivery. Um, one, of the, one of the pieces in here is expansion of our distributor terminal piece. Um, when we expanded, uh, late 15, early 16, we set up uh, our Syracuse and our Niagara Falls facility where we can have distributors, other distributors, um, partners, as I see them, um, bring their trucks into our facilities and we load them right there for them. Um, and that has really helped us out a lot. One, it's, it's great to have partners in the business and not as much competitors, uh, but that has also helped us where we can uh, bring in more rail cars, especially since we made the the big effort to switch everything to bringing in our, our DEF, either 50% or 32.5 uh, via rail. Uh, one of the, our big challenges and, and expectations for us to continue growing, I know I'm just talking about bulk and all that stuff, but uh, you know, there is, there is a, a tight challenge when it comes to supply and getting DEF packaged. We do have customers that want you know, the packaging in the, either the retail store or um, in the parts department, and it, that's not an easy thing to get. Fortunately, we're, Canada's not that far away, and we can get some really good packaging sources up there, but that's something that we're definitely looking to. Uh, the, the last piece on expectations, though, it, it's a no-brainer on the fleet. We've, you know, we've got to expand on fleet, and it's not cheap, so you, you'll want to make your investment right. Again, you know, I talked about that earlier, though. Our, our, our big effort is on the heavy haul um, tankers. And then we're, we're working with the smaller straight trucks, which makes it really nice to be able to, to deliver um, at a smaller shop, get in there with a smaller truck. Um, 
but we, we're still looking for the right tank configuration for our customers. We need a winter storage um, tank. I'm, I'm not happy with what we have, what, what we found so far, but that's definitely a big need for our customers and we're looking to find a solution for them. So that's, that's pretty much everything on, on who we are, what we've done, what our challenges are. Uh, what I look forward to more than anything after we expand and, and set up um, you know, our facilities to, to handle larger volume, I, just, I see this as it's just going to continue growing in our market. Um, I don't see any, any reason why that's going to change on there. Our customers continue to increase their needs. Um, one of the things that we have moved over in the, into the deaf market for our, ourselves um, that we did you know, for years with tank monitoring on lubricant deliveries, antifreeze and that. Um, so I've heard a lot of talk about this week on monitoring. Um, when I speak on monitoring, I'm, I'm thinking of a, a different aspect on this and strictly knowing what the volume and temperature is of that product in the tank. Um, this, this is a great service that we offer our customers where they can log in and they can see what their volume is. They can even get alerts if they know they're getting down, getting low on it. Um, but for us, it's, it's really the key to everything for us. If we want to keep from buying you know, any more trucks and hiring any more drivers than we have to, um, it's going to be all about logistics. So tank monitors, we talked a little bit yesterday about, you know, analytics at seeing where customers' volume needs are changing. Um, but that's a, that's a big thing for us uh, to help us grow with this market. That's it for me. Just want to open up for any questions, though. Thanks, Matt. I'll start with a question. Uh, could you elaborate, uh, explain in a little more detail? You said that you, that you have some needs to develop or improve on the, the kind of winter storage tank offers you have for your customers. Do you mean, do you mean bulk storage tanks at the customer locations or uh, underground, overground? What, what, what kind of thing are you thinking there? Well, the, the biggest challenge is, you know, even at a, a bus garage or um, a large fleet of tractor trailers, they, you know, especially since we're delivering bulk products to them, lubricants, antifreeze, and all that already, it's not like they have, you know, just endless space um, to put a much larger tank in their shop. So that only makes you think we've got to go outside. And, you know, as a, on the distributor side, you know, we're, we're not afraid of spending the money to install the, the equipment on a, you know, a loaned option um, to the customer, but We've got to be able to have something with large capacity. I'm thinking anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 gallon capacity for our customers. Um, it needs to be insulated, heated. Um, you know, it needs to protect the quality of the product, all, all the above. And that's, uh, unless you, what I've seen is the cost range is, is wide. Mm -hmm. and very, it can be very expensive, and I'm more concerned with how do we protect the quality um, of the product for the customer at a reasonable rate. Mm. Good. So, uh, anyone have any questions for Matt on uh, the way that the market's working up there on the East Coast? Any questions? While you're thinking, I have another one. Um, if, if you had to just give us a t you know, kind of rough estimate uh, of your, your typical customer, how many, uh, wh what's their mix of, of, of SCI equipment compared to their total fleet? You know, is it, is it early on 10, 20 percent? Are you seeing some customers already at 80, 90 percent? How does that look? We've seen uh, a big change this year, more on the, the government side than anything, where you know they've planned it out over the years and they just make the switch. And so you're, you're talking where they may have one or two vehicles in their fleet and then they go into, you know, they replace it all where they're 80, 90 percent of their fleet. Right. Um, the, the only time I've seen it where the numbers are high on the fleet that they have, you know, they've converted a lot of it is your large um, national fleets where they absolutely, they're going to, you know, they made the decision, they planned it way out. Um, but so I, I would say uh, right now we're probably only in the 30% at best of um, vehicles in a fleet. That we, of customers we service. Wow. And do you still find customers that are really early on? They've only just had their first SCRs like in the last year or two? Did oh, you, definitely. Are there still lots of those? Definitely. So, so it's you, still very important about education and teaching that, the customer. Yeah. So for that customer group, there's a long way to go still for the conversion over. Right. Yeah, makes sense. 
Uh, any questions from us? Okay, I think right. uh, Thank that you. sums it up. Thank you very much, Matt. Mm -hmm.